Hi, this is George Cow. I'm excited today to be here with one of my clients, Dr. Trevor Arendt. He's a licensed uh, clinical psychologist. I just want to say hi to you first, Trevor, before I read out your bio. Hey, Trevor. Howdy, howdy George. Yeah, great having you here. Thank you for, for taking your time and doing this. Uh, so me. let me, well, Trevor's going to share some of the lessons he's learning in building his business. He's already built, actually, a successful uh, psychotherapy practice. And at the same time, he's also building a side uh, project that we'll talk about as well. So um, there's lots to discuss here and he'll be sharing the, the lessons and kind of the experiences he's, he's learning from, from both sides. Let me first read to you, um, to you all his bio and then we'll get into some of the business lessons. So Dr. Trevor Arendt is a licensed clinical psychologist who sees adults for long-term psychotherapy and also runs interpersonal process groups to help others develop effective and intimate relationships with others, usually by helping others become more comfortable with difficult conversations. He's also the author, and this is a side project here, of the book called How to Breathe Underwater, The Four-Week Plan to Relieve Debt Stress. Finally, he's passionate about sharing the art and science of psychotherapy and helping others understand how psychotherapy can offer deep and lasting transformation in people's lives. And he's been uh, doing these consistent videos on his new um, Facebook business page for, for psychotherapy. He's kind of sharing insights about personal uh, and spiritual growth and relationships, et cetera. So I'm excited for you all to check that out uh, because he's basically kind of, yeah, he's one of the more consistent folks that I, I see out there and I, I, I love it. And he's getting, starting to get some results already. So Trevor, great having you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah. So you've got a lot to, to share in terms of what you've been learning uh, in business. And one of the things which I believe a lot as well is how business can be seen as a journey of personal and spiritual growth, or I don't mm -hmm. know how you want to say it, but talk us through that a bit there. Yeah, sure. That was uh, certainly one of the things that surprised me because I think when I contacted you, I was feeling uh, stressed about my business and I, I knew where I thought I wanted to get to or what I thought would be a really fulfilling, you know, sort of plateau to rest at. But the climb, I was like, oh, geez, I don't want to do this. This sounds terrible. <laughs> and so it was a good uh, shift working with you and, and starting to approach it much, much in a much healthier way, I think, to look at the journey. I mean, we all know the saying, like, it's a journey, not the destination, but actually once you're on the journey, you're like, ah, it's hot, the road's bumpy, this is dumb. So yeah, for me, it was a big shift to start to see um, the things that I could do that would both build my business, but also be rewarding or useful in and of themselves. Um, and so that, yeah, that was a very, very helpful shift to try to undertake and get started with like producing the content, for example, yeah. which at first I thought, oh, this is a chore. It felt like, oh, this is really going to feel like a chore. I'm going to have to be consistent about it. What am I going to say, et cetera. Um, but finding that that was actually immediately beneficial to my business now, I really feel like it actually has helped me be a better therapist in the room with people. But then it's also been useful in terms of building my business. So yeah, that has been that's been a real that's probably the biggest shift I think I've, I've experienced since starting this. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, we hadn't planned for me to to, to to kind of dive into this particular topic, but I'm interested in your um, thoughts about fear. And oh, about well, actually, we we wanted to talk about sort of perfectionism a little bit there, but but for all of us who are starting with creating content, who who haven't yet gotten into a rhythm yet, I think a, one of the yeah one of the biggest blocks is fear. Um, so talk about talk about that a little bit, yeah. just from your own kind of personal sure. development expertise. Here. Yeah, <laughs> my own personal fear. How long do we got? Yeah, <laughs> I think I could go on for a little while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think there were a ton of things I was afraid of when I started, when I thought about producing content. So I think probably the biggest one was I was afraid that it would be just useless to people and annoying or narcissistic. Like, who is this schmuck with a camera? You know, I still feel, I think in one of my videos, I talked about feeling, I, I got a little like stabilizer from my iPhone because I didn't want to run it through YouTube every time because I just didn't have time to wait for it. So I... And I used to mock people with selfie sticks endlessly. And so karma, of course, is now I'm walking around with a extremely advanced 
selfie stick that's like stabilizing my iPhone as I talk to the camera. So yeah, that was probably my biggest fear was that I would just look really narcissistic and obnoxious. Like who does this person think he is? Why is he doing this? And people would just see it and roll their eyes. Um, I think the thing that helped me the most with that in talking to you, or I think it was actually, I don't even know if we talked about it directly or it was just some of your content. It was like, you know, it's not really up to you to decide what's good and what's bad. You're just throwing something out there and whatever happens with it happens. And uh, I think that was really helpful for me to think, think through that in that way and actually realize, you know, it's actually more narcissistic for me to imagine that I know how everybody else is gonna think about me. That's actually the definition of narcissism to some degree, <laughs> that and trying to control it. So that really freed me up to just say, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. I'm just gonna put it out there. I think it's at least somewhat interesting, hopefully, and some people will resonate with it and some people will not. So that was a big fear. And then of course the other, I think the other biggest fear was the commitment to a schedule and thinking, okay, like if I set it up this way, not only am I gonna disappoint myself, but say I luck out and I get a few audience members, they're gonna be disappointed because I'm not producing content in the rhythm that I promised I would and I'm gonna look like I'm out of ideas and you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that was certainly a fear of mine. Um, and I think that was a, so far, knock wood, that's been a pleasant surprise in that it's one of those things that the more you put in, the more energy you put in, the more that comes out of it. So the more that I commit, to doing content and follow through with it, the more ideas I actually wind up having. If I get out of the rhythm of doing content, those are the weeks that I don't have as many ideas. So it's, a, it's, it's almost a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of the amount of energy that I put towards it versus the amount that's coming back at me creatively. Um, so that was a big, you know, it, that one's still hard to rest in that because it's like, that's gotta have a ceiling at some point. Like I'm gonna definitely, run out at some point, but I don't actually think that I, that's true. Like, it's not like ideas are limited or yeah. ways of saying things are limited. So, Absolutely. yeah. Brilliant. I love, I love you mentioning this. So um, one thing at a time here. So the, the one about, well, what if people don't like it or what do they, what do they think of me? Mm -hmm. You, now that you've been, you put out there, uh, I don't know, dozens now. I think a video. Yeah, so something getting, like I haven't counted, but yeah, yeah I think it's probably dozens. I, I think now. it's been it's been yeah. It's been two, how many a week? Two a week? Two to two a week on my therapist page, and then one a week on my debt book page, yes, and then sometimes okay. I throw in a bonus video. So I think it's That's probably cool. yeah, yeah, it's at least yeah, several dozen exactly. now. So so now you've got several dozen, and not all of them have gone viral. Ugh, huge disappointment. How 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 shattering, <laughs> but yes, so, so that's talk, true. <laughs> talk, talk, through, talk through that, that, experience, that inner experience of once you have put something out there and you're not, and of course we're also doing, you know, Facebook ads on your yes. videos. We're getting smart about that and making sure it's going to certain audiences that are more likely to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. So you are, we are making sure that it is reaching people. Right. But some videos, of course, have better reactions and comments than others. Sure. So how do you how do you work through the the ones that don't have the reactions and the comments that you expected? Yeah, I think it was one of those things where um, and you see this in therapy all the time working with patients, right, where the fear of the thing is so much worse than the actual thing itself. Wow. Right. So you know, the thought, of, oh man, it's not going to catch on or people aren't going to blah, blah, blah. Like it actually happens and it's such a non-event. It's just like, oh, you know, I mean, and actually more than anything, as I've put out enough content and some of them have gotten some interest, it's actually been interesting and compelling to find out the ones that don't hook anybody. It's not, a, it doesn't feel like a personal attack or something. It's just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I was really jazzed about that. I, well, well, I don't know. Doesn't doesn't hook people. That's okay. A really nice reaction. What about the person who says, "Well, this must mean I'm not very smart. Uh, this must mean I need to get you know another three years of training, or this right. must mean I'm not very interesting to look at or to hear or whatever. Whether it's writing or something. How how yeah. about the person who's saying it's about me? It's about my worth as a person, right. the value that I can actually contribute to the world. That's yeah. A Totally. Yeah. And I, I've certainly felt that way before. So it's not far from my own experience. And I think that the way that I would work with that working with somebody and also the way I try to practice what I preach and working with it is um, so 
a couple of things. So one is producing more content. So just producing more so that you get a varied sense of reaction. So then you can start to notice, oh, some work, some don't. So you don't catastrophize or just like fixate on one piece of data nice. that yeah. backs up every bad thing you've always thought was true. And you go, oh, I knew it. There it is. Right. So that's one thing. So to do more of it, take more risks. But then the other way is, um, is to relate to that rather than think, oh, I'm, I'm noticing something true about myself as I'm making this observation. I tend to try to relate to it more as like uh, one part of myself speaking to the rest of me or another part of myself. And the way that that sticks with me is if I imagine sitting with someone and they tell me, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to start a business, I'm taking some risks. One of the things I've done is I've made a few videos and you know, I just made this one that I just felt was really good. I, it was really meaningful to me and I put it out there and there wasn't really much of a reaction to me. Oops, sorry, I turned that off. There wasn't really much of a reaction. Oh, I was really disappointing. And then I try to imagine myself, would I respond to that person by saying, well, it's obvious because you don't have any intrinsic worth. You're kind of a piece of crap and you should probably quit. Frankly, I don't even know why we're having this conversation because it was stupid for you to even begin this in the first place. Like if I'm saying that stuff to myself and it feels okay, and I imagine saying it to another person and it feels weird, I try to work backwards there and say, you know what, I bet this is one of those circumstances where for whatever reason, we have this human quirk that we feel so much more comfortable, a lot of us do at least, feel so much more comfortable being brutal to ourselves in the privacy of our own heads and saying things to ourselves that we would never say to another person. And, you know, if one of our friends came to us and said, oh, somebody said this to me, we'd be like, screw that person, they're a schmuck, like, why are you listening to them? So anyway, that's the two ways that I try to work through it for myself is produce more so that I get some reassurance that some of my ideas are at least somewhat interesting to people. But then also, if I wouldn't say it to someone else, I try to be careful about stopping myself from going too far down that road. And so why do I think I deserve that? Yes, that's great. Mm -hmm. Great. I love it. Thank you. Sure. Um, so another lesson uh, you've been working on and learning in the business is you had some initial blocks or reservations about how business is done or how marketing yeah. is done. Maybe you could talk a bit about that and yeah. Yes. All right. Well, you know, now at great risk of what we all worked out, I'm going to praise you to your face here. So sorry, brace yourself. <laughs> but this was one of the really, really, this was a really helpful thing that you uh, said to me when I was talking about it. Cause I, when I came to you, I said, yeah, you know, I wrote this book and I've been trying to advertise and I just feel so awkward about it because like, I don't like promoting myself in this way. And you know, all this stuff that I just felt uncomfortable. Uh, and I was like, I'm really dragging my feet on like, um, you know, developing, like I didn't have the words for this then, but like, I, you know, I, I feel weird about a lead magnet, you know? Um, and, and it must be because I have some inhibitions about pursuing my dreams or being ambitious or something like that. So I kind of expected us to work through some of that or talk about that. But it was really, really helpful for me when I, you know, I said something like, you know, a lot of the things I just have this block thinking that a lot of business practices are sort of unethical. And it was such a relief for me when you just were like, yeah, well, they are. <laughs> like, that's probably actually a good intuition. That is, uh, that's okay that you have that intuition. And a lot of the way that business has been taught or approached traditionally there might be a reason it feels kind of icky because a lot of it's about creating a sense of failure and inadequacy in a potential client and then pouncing on it with a sense of, with an artificial sense of urgency. So it was a huge relief to know that, um, well, it was just nice to hear that some of my intuitions weren't totally wrong there. And that also there were alternative ways of approaching business that could be really well aligned with some of those ethical intuitions that I felt were important. And third, and maybe even just as importantly, that there was another way to do it and that it would actually work. <laughs> so it wasn't just going to make you sort of a, a hapless feel-gooder out right. there in the world that wasn't making any sales or actually producing anything yeah. of, like yeah. that was giving people any value or help. But, but you felt really good about yourself because you were doing it in an ethical way. <laughs> um, it yeah. was nice to hear that all three of those things were true. So totally. that Thank was really, really useful. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think what's particularly good about um, – those of us who feel some inhibition towards the way marketing has traditionally been done is that it's becoming more and more mainstream that, that, that feeling. Yeah. So when we 
do marketing or business from a more generous, uh, ethical, caring way, we are like the unicorn now. It's like, what? <laughs> you know, like that's what, and that's what people have been saying to me whenever they find me. Like, you're like this, wow. Like, yeah. I've never seen anybody do this kind of thing. And I see right. all, I mean, I hear this all the time. Like, hey, I saw a Facebook ad from you, but it wasn't trying to sell me anything. It was just trying to help me right. with some idea, some content. Yeah. That's, kind of weird and kind of cool yes yeah wow. yeah yeah everybody you know so it's like so when we when we care people are like wow you can care <laughs> right and then of course they stay they stay with us and those are the people who end up buying etc totally so, yeah thank you for sharing that so what mm -hmm. i like to do now is to, to kind of transition into having you share some of your your uh work with us i we will talk about the sure. therapy work as well as the relief and debt work I think um, both things, personal growth and then, you know, kind of debt, stress and money. I think that'll, that'll relate to a lot of the folks watching this and, you know, sure. as well. So, so uh, one of the ideas in your psychotherapy is you look at growth. Well, of course, you know, from a very individualized perspective, mm -hmm. what does that, what does that mean? Yeah, it's a, uh, thanks. And this was one of the things that's actually, um, you know, uh, one of the things you also helped me with was, um, instead of waiting for everything to be perfectly in terms of oh, this is my idea, I'm going to bring that into the world and it's going to go like this to start being generous right away and start getting an active relationship with your audience, potential audience to get coaching from them about what is it that people are hungry for and what is it that I can offer? And let's line that up. So um, it's been helpful doing some of the content to help refine this message, which I had somewhere, but it really wasn't clear to me or I couldn't put it succinctly so I think what one of the ways that I like to think about growth and this is borne out by a lot of the research on psychotherapy that I'm a part of and also the way that I've seen therapy work for people and it's been a part of my practice is that there really isn't a one size fits all approach to any problem in life and what I see in a lot of personal growth teaching is somebody has um, discovered something that's worked really well for them and then they found a lot of resources that back up that idea. And then they want to offer it to people and say, well, this is a truth, capital T, right? Um, but from my perspective and my experiences, there's lots of contradicting messages in those. Like, in other words, should you be really generous and selfless? You can find tons of backup for that and lots of people living very generously and selflessly. And you think, wow, that's really beautiful. I want that. Or should you be a strong advocate for yourself and know your value and know your worth and really not short sell yourself on that sort of thing, right? So it's like, well, those each seem pretty good. They seem pretty valuable. So which one is true? And so my, my thought about it, my belief about it is that they're both true and useful, but only in the context of knowing yourself. And so one way that somebody put this to me that always remembered that I always remembered was, you know, if we're trying to get to here, some people point north and some people point south. We're trying to get to the same point, but to say north is right, north is the perfect direction, why would anybody go south? That could really mislead somebody or somebody who could be reading it being like, oh man, I'm not enough of this, I'm not enough of that. You know, that was some of my initial feelings coming to you, which helped get kind of knocked into place based on our back and forth. So, so I, I like to encourage people to think very um, to think very carefully about the types of messages that they're taking in from the personal growth stuff that they're consuming, but use it rather as instead of saying like, oh, I found the truth to say, oh, well, this is some direction that I'm getting that's encouraging me at this point in my life towards a certain direction. And then can I work backwards to understand what set of beliefs I'm challenging or undoing, but then to not continue to carry that longer than necessary. So it's been an interesting thing trying to refine this because it's a bit of a complex message. And so how does that turn into a product? You know, I'm still working on that, but I still think it's for the kind of the most popular videos I've made have been ones that have pointed towards that. Um, so I still think that's a, it's a useful thing to know or think about. It's just hard to know exactly how that winds up becoming a product, although that's certainly something that got integrated a lot into the way that I wrote my book about debt. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, I think it's important, but I'm still working on it. Totally. I, I mm -hmm. love what you said in that example of we're coming to here and then some of us are here, some of us are there. Yes. And, and yeah. carrying that piece of advice or that framework 
for longer than it needs to serve serve our journey you know exactly so i that's brilliant i think that especially like a lot of um yeah it, it, a lot of us we get to a certain stage in our of success or a certain stage of development and the, the, those skills may not be the same skills that take us to the next stage of development that's a, you know, i totally think that's right you know because yeah. it's like oh we're trying to get north you know trying to get here north is good north is good north is good keep going north <laughs> oh no you're no, 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 wait you gotta, you gotta do a u-turn now yeah right. so it's yeah. very helpful i think to stay flexible about that sort of thing yeah um what kinds of what kinds of issues do you work with in your in your therapy practice i i have a very generalist practice so i work with ev uh pretty much I mean, anything that might bring anyone to therapy, I see in my caseload. I don't specialize in anything like depression or anxiety. Um, I see depression, I see anxiety, I work with sexual trauma, I work with work conflicts, I work with family dynamic difficulties, I work with money stress, I work with, uh, you know, I work with people who self-harm, suicidal stuff, all of it, I, I work with a very, very general approach. Um, and, and why would you say your clients choose you or stay with you uh, versus, yeah, going to another source or, yeah, how, how would you, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, this is one of those times where I'm like, oh, geez, how do I talk about myself in this way? <laughs> but what I, what I suspect is the case is that I don't work with people in therapy um, as if they're a diagnosis. So in other words, I don't treat anxiety the same every single person I see because I'm constantly trying to work out um, what set of beliefs is someone eager to let go of. And um, you could have three people who all have the same belief, like I am not worthwhile or something. Let's just take that. For one person that might manifest as depression, for one person it manifests as anxiety, for another person it, it, it manifests as drinking too much. Or let's say even, you know, let's say it manifests somebody is working extremely hard and they're very successful, but underneath that is the sense of I'm not worthwhile. So a lot of what I'm doing in therapy is trying to focus on, well, what is the core underlying belief that's driving whatever behavior it is? I'm a lot less focused on the behavior, um, unless because of the person's belief, I really should be focused on the behavior. So... I, I think that people stick around because I'm working with them in a very, very flexible way. And I often change with them. I often change my approach with them. So, you know, my sense is everybody's trying to get to here, right? And so um, we might be pointing north for a while, but then I try to be a, a alert to when, oh, wait a minute, we've gone too far. We need to point south now. You know, yeah. like you've done a great job learning to be assertive. That's fantastic. You never felt entitled to say no to somebody. Now you do. Amazing. But now you're starting fights with everybody. So it's gone a little too far. <laughs> you know, how do you, how do you, you've, you've really claimed that part of yourself. Now you need to learn to be a little bit, now we might need to work on being more generous or having, you know, you're not trying to get out of the woods anymore. You're out. So what, what do we do next? Sort of like becoming more precise with a new skill that they've learned. Yes, they absolutely. Yes. So um, awesome. Well, we've got a couple minutes left and I wanted to make sure we talked about the other project you're working on. You wrote a book that helped people yes. get relief from the stress of debt, money debt, sure. et cetera. So talk about that or any, any part of it that you, you think is important here. Yeah, I, you know, when I graduated from my doctoral program, I had um, $230,000 worth of debt at 6.5% interest, I, which is $1,500 a month. And I just, you know, I buried my head in the sand about it when I was in graduate school because I knew I had this dream of being a, uh, a psychologist. I knew I wanted to be a therapist. I want to be the best one I possibly can be. So I just went to the school that I thought would give me that chance. And I thought, well, I will cross the money bridge when I come to it. And, you know, certainly the people who offer you financial aid are not in the business of saying, well, let's really think carefully about this. They're like, yeah, follow your dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds like beautiful coaching, but depending on the direction you're going, maybe it's terrible advice. You know, maybe that's pointing exactly the wrong direction. So I think it was, it was very much worth it for me because I love, I love my work, but um, it really freaked me out afterwards. And I got totally paralyzed. I did all the wrong things about it. I avoided it. I just pretended it would get better. I, anyway, so I did all the wrong things for a long time until I kind of faced up to it. And uh, so the book came from, uh, I wrote myself a treatment plan, basically, as if I was a patient coming to me and saying, oh, I'm stressed about this. And I was like, 
you know, for a long time, I thought, well, this is finances, I suck at finances. And then eventually, it finally clicked, wait, these are feelings underneath this. And actually, I know how to work with those. And these are beliefs that are getting in my way. So, so the book was my attempt to help myself with this problem. Um, and then I turned it into a book. And now I'm offering it to people who are similarly stressed out about their debt. So it's a good book for people when you've tried to get a lot of financial advice, but you're having a hard time putting it into place. Um, this is trying to attack some of the underlying stuff. And it kind of captures some of my core approach to working with people, which is twofold. I'll try to do this as quickly as possible because I know our time is limited. But um, so the first thing that we try to do is look at how has this problem come into your life by things outside of your control? Now, it's not just complaining about the world, but it's legitimately looking at the difficult circumstances you found yourself in. So, you know, in my case, that was, you know, most Americans are in debt. There's an entire multi-billion dollar industry designed to outsmart individuals to make you, to help you take on more debt because that's how they make all their money. I was relatively young. Anyway, blah, 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 on and on, all this stuff that, you know, I, I really didn't have control over. And then trying to look at the personal responsibility part of it. What did I screw up here? What, what was the problem? Where did I get misled or where was I naive and how can I get uh, smarter about that? So I think that in most problems that people have, looking at both sides of that is really useful. And I think it's a mistake to go completely on one side or the other. It's like, oh, I'm just a helpless victim of circumstance. There's nothing I can do. There might be some release in, relief in that, but it's incredibly disempowering. And then the other side is say, oh, I'm responsible for everything that happens to me in my life all the time. There might be a sense of empowerment that comes with that, but that's too much responsibility. And it's just probably objectively not true. You know, you just can't control everything in the world. That's nuts. So trying to balance those two things is important. And then within the part of it that's personal responsibility, uh, I like to encourage people to, when they look at like, well, I was naive or I was foolish or whatever, instead of just going down that as a purely self-critical thing, um, I really believe that every character flaw or struggle that we have is paired probably with some gift. And I don't think that's just Pollyannish thinking. I, I've really seen that be true. So, you know, people who are very angry and say, oh, I'm a bad person because I'm angry. I yell at people. They're also probably really passionate and the first one to speak up when there's a problem. And so if you tried to get rid of both of those things, or you tried to get rid of one, you'd get rid of the other. And that would be a pretty big problem. So whatever the personal responsibility piece is, when you look at the, you know, the challenge that you faced or the shortcoming, that you're, whatever you're looking at as a shortcoming in the moment, try to break that apart into the thing that can be a liability, but also all the wonderful things that it brings into your life. And then try to use that to go forward to say, yo, I don't want to lose this, but how do I protect myself against this one? And so, so there's lots of other stuff in the book, but that's kind of a yeah. big generalized approach to it. And you work with this also in your therapy practice, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a big yeah. part of the way that I, um, cool. that's a, it's kind of a touchstone of the way that I'm thinking through what's going on with people or talk to them about. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, that would be a big mistake, given that individualized person. Yeah. Like if yeah. they were, you know, really worried, like, oh, I can never take up space mm -hmm. in the room. Somebody's always got to be smarter than me. It'd be the worst thing in the world for me to just say, well, here are all my theories about the mind. You know, my <laughs> job is to shut the hell up. But for somebody else who doesn't have that sensitivity, it can feel like a good uh, rapport for us to be back and forth and me thinking through things with them. That's great. Do you see patients uh, virtually, like online? Um, I have just started to do that because my electronic health record integrated in a uh, HIPAA compliant video chat session. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's in California, that's certainly doable. Um, the out of state stuff, I have to do more research on the legal implications of it, but it's, I would be totally open to it if we can, if, if the ethical uh, aspects yeah. of it are a go. Or if you... Uh, package it as coaching instead of therapy or something like that. You know, that might be the way to, that might be the that way to do it. I have yeah. to look into yeah. it. I have to look into it. Some of the, cool. some of the rules around being a psychologist are quite strict. And so oh, yeah. I yeah. have, I have heard the arguments it's like, well, once you have that license, you can never not be that oh, in wow. the public's mind. And thus you're oh, I see. You know, subject yeah. to all but the yeah, regulations. Yeah. I'll look into that. Yeah. But I'd look in, I'd be happy to look, yeah. I, I should look into it. It would be worthwhile yeah. to know that for sure. Cool. But uh, for sure, uh, obviously, those who, are, you know, a lot of folks actually watching this are in California, so they could. Oh, they, great. Well, there you go. They wish to. Um, uh, but anyway, you've got a, a book, the, the website for the book, reliefindebt.com. Yes. Reliefindebt.com. Mm -hmm. I'll be sure to link that. And also great. to your uh, Facebook pages where you do the videos for the 
personal growth as well as for, for the debt. So thank you, Trevor, Dr. Arendt, thank you so much for being part of this uh, conversation. Thanks for having me, George. And I've really, really appreciated working with you. It's been a huge, huge help to me. And just one more revelation around this is that, uh, you know, when I hired you, I was really thinking, okay, this is going to be a business coach, but I've really been shocked by the amount of personal growth and psychological health that's come along with focusing on aspects of my business, which was such a, that was such an exciting thing to discover. Oh, so awesome. I'm really grateful Thank for you. that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor. All right, George. Take care. See you soon.